Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I'm in On One Photo Raw today, and I'm just editing a photo and taking advantage of all the powerful masking tools that exist in On One because they're fantastic. I love them. I use them all the time. And in this uh, image and today's video, I dive into a few different ones and I just kind of co copy and paste and edit and adjust, all that kind of stuff. It's just fun and it's useful. It's super useful to target things. So specifically, let's get going. Um, here's my image. I've already done some adjustments here in tone and color. I also made some adjustments in the transform. I also took out some spots. So basically, I started like that, except I also cropped it, I guess. So I didn't really start like that. But anyway, it was a uh, regular shot, shot with a Nikon years ago. And then I cropped it into 16 by 9 and made some adjustments here, as you can see, in the uh, Develop tab, Contrast, Highlight, Shadows, all that stuff. A little bit of temperature adjustment. And I've gotten to there, but what I want to do is isolate some specific parts of the image and go apply filters to those parts. And so now that I've got it there, I feel like I've got a good base image, which is kind of how I treat the develop tab for me. It's get my canvas looking the way I want to look to start and then go do the things I want to do to be targeted, which for me is effects and local adjustments. So the first effect I'm going to add is HDR look, and I'm going to actually add that with a luminosity mask. I'm going to go ahead and invert that. And then I want to hit view so you can see it. And so there it is. And what I really need to do is just isolate the, uh, the sky so the sky is black. And lo and behold, there you go. If you use levels, you can do that. And I just want to take a look here. I could go solid like that, but I don't really want to because the other thing I'm going to do is combine this with a, another mask. And so um, I'm going to do something about like that. Let me close off view. And the other thing I want to do is I've got the perfect brush here. You can just click on that. And I'm in paint out mode, as you can see. And so let me hit view again. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to paint out some of this in the water because what I don't want to do is include HDR look in the water. And so the luminosity mask allowed me to isolate the sky really well. But um, there's so much difference in light value between the light and the, excuse me, the sky and the water that I really needed to come back with the perfect brush to isolate, uh, or I should say, remove the water as well. So let me finish touching this up and then I'll show you what I got. Okay, so I'll just stop there. That's close enough. I basically isolated that center section of the photo, which is what I wanted to do. And that's where I wanted to apply HDR look. And so there it is. Uh, I can close the masking menu. It defaults to 100 on compression, 20 on detail. I'm going to leave it. That's totally fine. However, I want to copy that mask because it's going to come in really handy for me. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and get Tone Enhancer. And here I'm going to go in and go ahead and paste that mask. So once again, I'm focused just on that center section of the photo, which is, as you can see, the castle and kind of the walls and the trees. Basically, not the sky and not the water. So now that I've got that isolated, I can just reuse that mask and I'm going to go ahead and bump up the exposure. I'm going to give it a tiny bit more contrast. I'm going to bump the whites significantly because I really want to bring back some of the uh, brightness in that uh, castle. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail here, like maybe a 10. So using that mask and isolating that section and then just applying it there with these adjustments has taken the castle from that to that. So now it's really kind of popping and standing out, which I like quite a bit. And now I'm going to go into color balance. And here I'm going to go ahead and paste that mask again but this time I'm gonna invert it. So in other words, I'm applying it to the sky and the water here and skipping the rest of it. And what I wanna do is basically just take the highlights hue uh, to like 235, 237, and uh, the amount, uh, let me just go ahead and uh, click on view so you can see that. And now that I've isolated that, the amount is gonna be uh, like, you know, low 40s, so 43, 44, something like that basically. I'm putting a little bit of blue in the sky and the water. So if you look at the before, there it is. It's, it's, it's not really colorful at all. Uh, it is very gray day, but it almost looks a little bit yellow, which I don't like. Um, I want it to be a little bit blue, so now it's a little bit blue. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to pop over to local adjustments and make a couple of adjustments here. The first one is with a gradient, and so I'm going to move it to about here and about something like that and I'm gonna compress that zone a little bit. And what I wanna do here is bump up the exposure to about a 0.7 or eight. Let me just kinda of see what looks good. You know, I think if that looks good, that's a 0.75. 
Add a little bit of contrast as well, so like about a 30, and now I might actually bump up the exposure a tiny bit more. So let's try a 0.8. With the 30 contrast, I think that looks good. And the temperature, I might go slightly negative just to get a little bit more of that cooler look into the water because there's so much shadow in the water and the reflection of the castle and all that. That's stuff. I'm hit Z to hide the masking a line there. Um, but the shadows look a little bit green, so I want to put a little bit more blue temperature there. So, so far, I like what I have. I want to do one more adjustment, also a local adjustment, and I'm actually going to paste the mask that I had earlier, which again is, if you view it, isolating the castle, kind of the man-made stuff, plus the trees, if you will. And what I want to do here is go ahead and close that menu, is go ahead and lift that exposure one more time. So I'm just getting a little bit more brightness. It's uh, clearly the subject of the photo. It was just a little too, uh, too dark, and I want to add a little bit more white back to it. So I'm doing that here basically again. So I'm going to go to about 35, let's say. And I think that's giving me some nice visibility. It's bringing back some of that color, or I should say that that, that whiteness, right? The, the brightness level. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and add some structure while I'm here because it is a man-made structure. I kind of like to add a little bit of crunch to areas like that. And so while I've already got it isolated and masked, which is a perfect mask basically because of all the capability here and on one, I've got that set. So honestly, these two adjustments here, I think had a nice impact on the photo. That's where I was before and then brighten the foreground, and now I came in and brightened the castle. I think that looks really nice. The only other thing I might do is go back to effects, and here I could add Tone Enhancer, and Tone Enhancer would allow me to isolate that sky one more time. This time, I'm just gonna isolate the sky, so I'm gonna click on Masking, I'm gonna get AI Quick Mask, and for Keep, I'm gonna go ahead and put Green all through the sky here, and then for Drop, I'm gonna go ahead and get basically the rest of the photo. So I just move my mouse around, get something about like that, hit apply, let it calculate, and honestly, it did an amazing job. I can refine some of these little details if I want to. I don't want to, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit done. And now I've isolated that section of the photo. So if you click on view to view the mask, you can see it's, it's very clean. So AI quick mask, super powerful, super amazing. I use it basically quite a bit. So here I could uh, basically isolate the sky a little bit, drop the exposure. The other thing that's cool about Tone Enhancer though, is you've got curves. And so one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, what I'd like to do is maybe darken the sky, give it a little bit more blue. I can do all of that here with curves. So I can just kind of pull this down and it's going to give me a, a, you know, control over the sky, as you can see, as I move this, um, this curves line around. So I don't know if you're familiar with curves, but Super powerful, super amazing. So I could pull that down a little bit. Gives it a little bit more darkness. And I could come into blue if you wanted and give it a little bit more blue. I don't want to overdo it and make it like crazy blue. Plus you can see some of the edges where I didn't refine my AI quick mask. That blue shows up. So you want to be careful and you do want to take the time to get your mask right. I'm going to go just a tiny little twinge of blue there. And if I go up here and turn this off, you can see the before. There's a sky before, and there it is now. It just gives it a little bit more oomph, a little bit more drama, and that's really my edit. It's basically taking advantage of the power of these, these masks and being able, being able to copy and paste them from a filter in effects over to local adjustments, and then I went back, added a new uh, AI quick mask here in Tone Enhancer in effects. Point is, you've got lots of capability, lots of power with the mask to move around and do different things, really customize the look of your image. If you look at the before, there it is, slightly off balance because it was a wide angle lens and it needed the lens correction stuff that I did. There it is with the adjustments as well as a lens correction. And I've got, I think, a much better looking final result. So if I do the before and after window, you can see, you know, significant change to the photo, right? And that's really more how I remember it. Admittedly, this was taken many years ago, so I can't say exactly what the sky was like other than overcast, but I wanted it to be a little bit blue and I wanted a little bit of blue in the water. I got what I wanted thanks to the power of on one. Thanks for watching my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how these tools work. If you have any questions, hit me up down below. Otherwise, catch you in the next video. See you guys. Thanks for stopping by and until next time, adios.